Good afternoon. Well, this is one that was sent to me. Charlie Martin steps up to become FIA Girls on Track UK Ambassador. So in order to understand what's going on here, we need to understand who Motorsport UK are and what Girls on Track is. So let's do that first. Motorsport UK used to be known as the MSA, the Motorsports Association. So they're the official membership organization and governing body for four-wheel motorsport in the UK. So they're, they're basically a big deal. The Girls on Track program is a joint initiative between the FIA and Motorsport UK to inspire girls and women into seeing and believing there's a rightful and valuable place for them in the motorsports industry. So that's great, this is good. We have Motorsport UK, who are the governing body of motorsport, teaming up with Girls on Track to inspire more women, girls, to get involved in motorsport, to overcome the barriers of getting involved in motorsport, which is quite obviously a very bloke orientated industry. So who would you choose for your ambassador to get more girls aged eight to 18 into motor racing? Well, there's plenty of choice for people uh, girls, women who are in motor racing, who would be really good to inspire girls aged 8 to 18, but instead they've chosen someone who actually was a bloke when they were aged 8 to 18, which seems very, very strange to me. Let's take a look at this. The announcement comes just before Martin, this is not, not Martin as in a bloke, Charlie Martin, the surname, um, was born a, a boy man and became a girl man, a girl a trans became a girl in 2018. Charlie Martin is 41 now, so became a girl late 30s. Um, anyway, the announcement comes just before Martin, not a man, as race season in Europe gets underway. Martin, I'm going to call you Charlie Martin because that's really confusing calling you Martin. Charlie Martin has already made LGTB... LGB... Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, Q and plus. I still don't know what the Q and plus are. History in sports car racing since transitioning midway through her motorsports career. But surely the career bit is everything that you did before and you were bloke then. So was that his career? And now it's very, very confusing. Motorsport UK is delighted to announce British racing driver and LGBTQ plus activist Charlie Martin as the latest ambassador for its highly successful Girls on Track programme. Uh, so, it's a tricky video to make this one because I have to dance sensitively around some issues that I really shouldn't be having to dance sensitively around. But, since coming out as transgender in 2018 and transitioning midway through a motorsports career, which started in European hill climbing, Martin, not a man, has overcome adversity to become a leading figure and a trusted voice within, within the LGTBQ plus community. She frequently appears in the media to raise transgender awareness and inclusion, not only within the sport, but on a wider scale as well. I think it's because Charlie Martin's got a really good agent, but we'll get into that in a minute. Stonewall, the largest LGTBQ plus rights charity in Europe, named her as their first sports champion. She also works with Mermaids, Athlete Alley, Racing Pride, and is a BMW friend of the brand. BMW are going all out on this LGTBQ rainbow stuff. Uh, additionally, Martin was featured in British Vogue's Vogue 25 in 2021 as an inspirational woman who shaped 2021 and beyond um, in a gigantic slap in the face to real women. Charlie Martin aspires to be the first transgender driver to compete at the world-renowned 24 Hours of Le Mans, one of the biggest races on the planet and highlight round of the FIA World Endurance Championship. Okay. Having most recently competed in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America, finishing second in the LB Cup class with teammate Jason Keats, Charlie Martin will continue to race a Lamborghini this season, moving to the European Championship, which kicks off at Paul Ricard on the 2nd to 4th of June. I'm filming this on about the 15th of June. I've got some results from that in a minute, and I'll talk about it. Charlie Martin joins a select group of inspirational women within motorsport as a Girls on Track UK ambassador. From team principals to mechanics, presenters to engineers, our ambassadors cover the breadth of the sport and provide invaluable insight, support and knowledge. I find this very strange. 
FIA Girls on Track is proud to be an inclusive environment and welcomes all trans non-binary, intersex and gender fluid people who'd like to be a part of our community. But Girls on Track is aimed at girls aged 8 to 18 and that shouldn't even be a thing within that age bracket, am I right? Uh, and then Charlie Martin said some stuff about being excited. Um, Charlie's knowledge and experience and courage will no doubt be a great asset to the more than 7,000 girls now engaged with our UK programme. We thank Charlie for her commitment and wish her the best of luck for the upcoming season. I'm not so sure how I feel about a bloke who now is a woman being chosen to inspire children to get into racing. But as I said, I'm going to go around the houses a little bit with this one because I've raised some issues. Look, there's my section there called issues. And I've got some notes at the bottom as well. And I want to get into those. In fact, let's get into my notes at the end first. What do you need to get into motorsport? Forget being inspired by a man or a woman or a girl or a bloke. I'm going to open the door. It's getting hot. Oh, that might make the light better for the video, actually. Okay, what do you need to get into motorsport? Well, I've written a list. You need a connection or an interest in motorsport. You need to be inspired to get into motorsport by someone, or you need a family that has a history in motor racing because they can sort of show you the ropes and how to get into it. So let me say this, I don't really know how to get into motorsport. I'm a car guy, but I wouldn't really know. I guess you'd have to go go-karting first and then you work your way up to Formula One a couple of weeks later. But in order to do that, what you need is, as I said, that connection or interest or a family connection to motor racing. Then you need money because it's very expensive to get into motor racing if you've got to buy, I mean, just the petrol for starters. And you need more than just petrol to go motor racing. Then you need a willing and loving family who are going to take you, pay for you and drive you all around the country. So motor racing is quite a posh industry full of people who had access to lots of money and had loving families who would take them to stuff. So three things, you need a connection, you need money and you need willing family because obviously you need to get into motor racing when you're young and you can't drive yourself around and you don't have any money. And finally, it's odd that this one comes last, but finally, the thing you need to get into motor racing is to be fast. Then I've got a section that I've said, things that don't matter, willies and fannies. Because if you don't have a connection and you don't have money and you don't have a willing family and you're not fast, then you can't be in motor racing. You're not going to be a successful motor racing driver, person, man, woman. And if you want to, as well with this, let's say you want a job in motor racing. Let's say you want to go and be the social media manager for a racing team. You don't have a family connection. You don't have money. You don't need to be driven all around the place and you don't need to be fast. But what you do need is to be good at managing social media. So if you're really good at managing social media, you might get the job working for that racing team. Does it matter if you've got a willy or a fanny? No, because you're meant to be good at what you're supposed to be going for the job to be good at. We seem to have got completely lost with this LGTBQ crap in the whole fact that the attributes that make you good at doing something are because you're good at doing something, not what you have downstairs or what you put on your face. None of that stuff is relevant in the real world. We need to just be nice to people. You're a human, I'm a human. I've got a willy, you haven't got a willy. I don't care, we're both humans. Should we get along? Yeah, let's get along. That's fine. That's very different to me saying, I haven't got a willy, but I used to have a willy, and now I need your job because you've got a willy. It's, it, I just, it's just absolutely crazy. So let's take a quick look at a few other bits then, right? I've touched on some of this already, but it's in my notes. So Charlie only came out as a girl in 2018 when he, she was in their mid thirties, but Girls on Track is aimed at girls aged eight to 18. So you're trying to inspire girls to get into racing with someone who was a bloke when they got into racing. Okay. Nextly, women and men are biologically different. You, there was a dog swimming in the water. The dog is biologically different to me. I am biologically different to women, okay? I've worked this out. Women do things that men simply cannot do biologically, like the stuff that men don't want to talk about, like periods and having children. Both of which, two things, periods and children, would make it difficult to be a racing person, man, woman. 
So what advice and inspiration can a man pretending to be a woman give to a young racing driver who's dealing with either of those two things, periods, babies, notwithstanding the fact about having children? Do I take nine months out of my racing career to go and have a baby? Is it gonna be a problem being on the racing track when I've just come back from having a baby? Am I gonna be on the racing track driving around at five miles an hour because I don't wanna die in a fiery racing crash because I've just had a baby? I don't think a bloke pretending to be a man who doesn't have kids can really inspire anyone who's concerned about any of those things. Oh, but I'm a bigot. Lastly, accessibility, right? I think motorsport has a major problem with accessibility generally, okay? I am not a super thick person. I'm not a bigot either. I just love everybody. Um, so I'm not super thick and I know how to use a computer, but it mentioned the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Europe race, okay? So I thought, let's go have a look at the results. You go on Lamborghini's website and it's really difficult to find the results. And then when you do find the results, they're really difficult to understand. Here's an idea for Motorsport UK. Just make a list of where your races are and a rank of who wins them and make it really easy to find for everyone. And put a little statement at the top saying, this race is for this class of car and it's entered by this class of people, notwithstanding Willys and Fannies, because that doesn't matter. I don't understand anything about motorsport. You've got all the various different series and none of them make any sense. Sort that accessibility bit out first before you start talking about all this crap that you're talking about. Anyway, two hours later, when I finally found the results for the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Europe race that's mentioned in the press release, I discovered that Charlie Martin isn't the only British woman who's competing. Abby Eaton, who's been on Top Gear and the Grand Tour, and is 10 years younger than Charlie Martin, was also competing. And Abby Eaton was competing as a number one driver, not a number two driver, like Charlie Martin. Um, Abby Eaton and her team were also fast around the track. Uh, the fastest lap on the day generally was two minutes, three seconds. Abby Eaton's team did two minutes, five, and Charlie Martin's team did two minutes, nine. So I'm not gonna go out and say, I think I found someone who might be a better ambassador for getting young women and girls into racing because she is a young woman and she is faster, but you could draw those conclusions if you wanted to. Also on Wikipedia, it told me that Abby Eaton is actually a lesb lesbian. I didn't know, and I don't care. Why does that matter? I look this, and this, this is the whole thing here, isn't it? I didn't realize this when I put the script together. I went on the results, which are here, right? And I circled the drivers, and then I went on their times, and I circled their times. And at no point, I was, I was looking, I wasn't looking for women, because it doesn't say. And that's the point in racing. It doesn't say here, okay, I can see the name of the driver, the nationality, and I can see the name of their team and the nationality of the team. It doesn't say whether they're a woman man. It doesn't say whether they've got a willy fanny. It just gives me who they are. And it's the same on the results, you know? There's nothing special about it. It's just who can get round the track in the smallest amount of time. That is motor racing. None of the other stuff matters. Yeah, that's really interesting. At no point did I think when I was looking at this, oh, I wonder if Abby Eaton's a lesbian. It didn't occur to me at all because it's about speed and getting around the track. It's not about who you are and what you are. So we've got the UK's governing body of motorsport choosing someone to make racing more inclusive for girls who are aged 8 to 18, who wasn't actually a girl when they were aged 8 to 18. Then we've got Abby Eaton, who's 10 years younger, four seconds faster and arguably more well-known anyway. Um, so that, that, that's it, that, that's everything I've got to say. A little bit of a round the houses video. Um, have I got it completely wrong? Am I totally crazy to think that a man dressed as a woman is not the correct choice for inspiring girls aged eight to 18 to get into motorsport? Have I missed something entirely? Can I have a baby? Am I on my period? <laughs> All these comments be like, Jeff, you're just clearly on your period. It's just your time of month. It's absolutely fine. I don't think it is absolutely fine. I actually had, I haven't got access to it because I haven't got my Twitter here with me because I don't keep my Twitter on my phone because that would be a terrible thing for a human being to do. But I did have another racing driver contact me, a bloke, but that doesn't matter. He's got young girls who are in the age group or approaching the age group and he doesn't think it's a good idea because he doesn't see that that person is a good inspiration for young women. At ages eight to 18, right? 
You shouldn't have anything to do with any of this sexuality stuff. You're working out who you are, you're a teenager, you feel weird, okay? I used to paint my nails black and I had dyed blue long hair and I used to want a tattoo of a star on my arm, right? With a checkerboard inside it and flames coming off it. And now if I had got that tattoo, I'd be extremely embarrassed everywhere I went. So instead, I wait till I was about 18, 19, and then I've got three very small tattoos that you can hardly see today. I didn't cut my willy off because I felt a bit strange because I was getting bullied at school. And I'm very glad I didn't. I did get bullied at school. I got bullied a lot at school. I absolutely hated school. The things that you go through when you're aged eight to 18 are just a natural part of being a human. And there's different ways of dealing with it. And if you're still watching this video, let me give you a, a final anecdote. Last couple of nights, myself and the wife have watched American Pie 1 and 2. And they're great, and they're funny, and they're stories about growing up. Ignore all of the rude stuff and all of that, right? It's part and parcel of being a teenager that you grow up and you work yourself out, and then you turn into an adult. What is important is not pushing young children into that position before they're ready to do so. American Pie is more a story about parenting the relationship that jim has with his dad is absolutely key to that film and it's really important we need to be having the right conversations with children but we need to be keeping children as children we need to be educating them in the right way on how to look after themselves and how to best conduct themselves in a world that is falling apart it's really interesting going back and watching american pie because the level of innocence that those guys have i mean they're american college students so they're you know mid to late teens and they don't know anything about any of this stuff in that film. They don't have a clue. And I feel like that's the way it should be. It's almost like there's an agenda to sexualize children at a younger age. And the reason it feels like that is because there is. But I'm not gonna to touch any more on that in this video. That was quite a difficult video to make because it's one of those where you have to sort of skirt around all the main issues. But I hope you enjoyed the video and um, let me know your thoughts. And um, if you have got access to motorsport, a lot of money and willing, then I'd like to be a racing driver. I've got a willy and I'm sure I'm really fast. Thanks for watching. It's a tricky one that was, wasn't it? Really tricky. Isn't it ridiculous that it's really hard to make videos calling out stuff like this? Because I just feel like I'm gonna get destroyed in the comments, even though I kind of know that morally I'm on the right ground. It's the same as that trans one I did about these schools. Like, I put all of that out. I got so much hate from all of these other car YouTubers and all their followers. And I was like, I know that I'm right, so I'm okay. I can come out with my head held high without coming out. I just, I don't care. I don't care if you're a gay or a lesbian. I don't care if you're a bloke that wants to be a man. I don't care if you're a man that wants to be a bloke. It just, it, it makes no difference to me because I just believe in humans. The more we focus on the differences between us, the more we highlight LGBTQIA, all of this stuff, the more we put labels on it and the more we drive barriers between people because they've now got labels. If we just called everybody humans, then we'd get along. But if we just called everybody humans, then suddenly we have to think about the humans that are mining lithium and the humans that are mining cobalt and the humans that live in China under this ridiculously oppressive regime. If we just focus on our little Western world and our LGBTQ rights, we don't need to look at humans in the greater context of being a human. Wow, I mean, normally my introductions are long, but that was like a nine minute conclusion. Tricky video, that one, so I hope you liked it. Thank you very much, genuinely.